a master class in natural aquariums. We're sitting here on Curry Creek in southwest Florida in a natural setting. What better way to understand a natural aquarium than to examine a natural setting? We see trees surrounding water. Trees surrounding water. Banks coming up out of the water. We see ripples on the water. It's a bit of a windy day here today. A clear blue sky. Water that is right here, tidal. The tide's coming in. So it's gradually filling. And a little later we'll stop and turn and begin to fall. So the water ebbs and flows and washes in and washes back out. The natural It's a little chilly. I'm, I'm a little cold sitting out here. Don't know if I'll be able to survive this for 15, 20 minutes. But it is a natural set. It's not something synthetic, something that someone made up, some structure that was put together to fit an artistic sensibility. Nothing like that. It's what has happened in this place over millennium that has caused it to be what it is. Things fall into place. Things happen. Oh, I don't mean things like, um, um, I don't know. Well, things like storms. Storms happen. And they change things. The ebb and flow of the tide happens. And it changes things. The seasons change things. It all is part of a natural setting. So what then is a natural aquarium? We can't very well do all of the things in our aquarium that occur in nature. We can't, well, we could have wind blowing, I suppose, with fans. We could have night and day occurring. We could have water ebbing and flowing, just rising and falling. There are a lot of things like that we can duplicate. If we do them, we do them synthetically. We don't do them naturally. So they are not natural phenomena occurring in the tank. What then are the natural things that can occur in our tank that otherwise also occur in a natural environment. I am chilly. I'm going to have to stop this and go inside. Let me be right back with you here. Well, I put a sweater on. I really don't want to leave this spot. This is uh, a bend in the creek. A bit of a fork actually, but it doesn't go far up that way. And then comes down. This creek is maybe 10 miles long. It goes from, uh, from a river about 10 miles up, 8 miles up, and opens onto uh, to a bay drops into a bay. So, what can we create in our fish tank that 
reflects or even attempts to duplicate what occurs naturally. Well, obviously we can put water in it. Water occurs naturally in environments that works. We can put plants in it. We can have a few fish. We can even maybe put it in a place where it'll get natural sunlight. Beyond that, what can we do? Well, I've maintained for a long, long time that the most important aspect of any aquarium is the substrate at the bottom. Most fish keepers, even very advanced fish keepers, don't pay much attention to that. So we're going to be focusing on it in future lectures as well as today. We're going to get in depth about substrate. But for now, we're just looking for elements. What can we bring into our aquarium that will replicate a natural environment? Certainly, whatever is on the bottom is part of that. The water is part of that. The animals, the plants. And by animals, not just the fish or invertebrates, the snails and shrimp and whatever else, but the microscopic life as well. That's part of it. That's part of the biodiversity. And so we're going to also talk about biodiversity. Now there's something. An airplane flying over. That's part of the natural environment too, isn't it? It's natural in that we're here and we're part of what's happening. So our, our, our impact is part of the natural world and the natural environment. This notion that somehow humans are not part of the natural environment is ridiculous on its face. It is frankly ignorant and it denies the reality of creation. For we are every much a part of creation, as is every other living thing, and every other non-living thing, for that matter. We are here, and because we are here, we understand what here is through our eyes and ears and nose and mouth and touch. We experience it, and we are part of the experience of it. So, there's the final element. The element that is the fish keeper. So the fish keeper is part of the natural environment in that fish tank. He puts his hands in, or she, to the water and moves things around takes fish in, puts, uh, puts fish in, takes fish out, turns lights on, turns them off, feeds the plants and fish. You are as much a part of that natural environment as is any other aspect. And so consider yourself. Consider your role. Consider what you do. Consider how you interact with your aquarium. That's part of what that aquarium is all about. And then when you think about the natural environment, think about its longevity. How long will it sit there in that little corner, on that window ledge, on that stand in the living room? How long will it sit there? Weeks? Months? Years? Decades? How long? And as it sits, it changes inexorably. It changes. It becomes something different than what it was. As much a part of your involvement as of any other.
another aspect of its reality. What is a natural aquarium? It is, in point of fact, whatever all of the bits and parts and components of it make it to be. It is what it is. It is more than what because you are but one component, one aspect of that life system, of that living system. So you must study it, admire it, reflect upon it, acknowledge your part in it, but only as a part, a natural system. How much of what I am sitting in here is a natural system? Why, every bit of it. Every bit of it. So, when Amano talks about creating hardscape by dropping rocks and branches indiscriminately, into a tank, all he really is saying is that what occurs naturally, accidentally, if you will, what occurs incidentally, is every much a part of what is nature and what is natural, as is anything you might do with great design, or fortitude, or insight, or aesthetic sensibility. It's all part of the same thing. It's all part of what occurs naturally. So, as you seek to create your natural environment, begin by taking a very deep breath. Letting it go. And then breathe deeply. And slowly. And act with grace. And love. And affection. As you put together all of the components of this wonderful little box of life you're about to create. And in so doing, you will become part of a wonder, part of a miracle, part of something that is happening in front of you, that you're a part of, and that is very much an expression of who you are, but also an expression of everything else that goes into it. A miracle. It is a miracle, one to be celebrated, one to be enjoyed, one to be delighted in, and one that brings a warmth and a depth of life. that is frankly hard to duplicate in any other So let's get on with this then. Series 2, the substrate. We're going to talk about that in our very next video. But thank you now for plugging in and for hanging in there with me through this little diatribe of mine sitting here on Curry Creek, shivering a bit, wanting to be here because it is such a special place, and wanting to be with you because you are such a special friend. I'll talk to you in the next video. In the meantime, be sure to catch us in the morning. We're here every morning, every day.
for an hour, hour and a half talking about fish of aquariums, talking about these wonders that we see and create. Bye for now. Bless you all. And see you soon.